Alrighty, we are alive again. I will wait for a couple more minutes until the time hits one o'clock and uh, we can get started with this live broadcast from Finnish Forest. In the meanwhile, if somebody is wondering what on earth this little white block is, let's test it better. That is my microphone wind gag, which suppo is supposed to protect uh, the sound from of the wind. I see Mania is online. Moikka Mania! I hope you're doing nicely and staying safe and happy. I will wait for a bit bit longer to see if we get a few more people but very soon we will get started. Sally from Brisbane Australia has joined. Good to see you. I hope you're well. Welcome to join this nature tour today. Let me just put my backpack. Hello, hello. Right, oh, it is one o'clock, so let's get started. Ooh, just a moment though. Here we go. First of all, hello, moi from Finland. If there's anybody out there who doesn't know me yet, my name is Kati Panka and I come from Finland. Normally I am a tour leader uh, leading small group tours in Northern Europe, in the Baltics and the Nordics. Uh, but obviously now due to Corona situation, uh, I'm stuck here in Finland which doesn't really bother me too much because Finland is beautiful. Uh, I actually realized yesterday that for the past four years I have been either living or traveling abroad during springtime. So I haven't seen Finnish spring forest uh, in a good while. And uh, I have realized that it's really beautiful. It's really uh, exciting time of the year because uh, as you probably know in Finland we have four seasons which are quite distinctive and uh, those four seasons are obviously winter, spring, uh, summer and autumn. Nowadays due to global warming and all our winters are not as they used to be but Lucky for us, uh, the springs still remain their wonderful selves. I am now here up on top of the viewing tower of National Park Torronsua. And uh, you can see probably in the background that the sky is pretty dark. Just an hour ago it was raining and there was a bit of hail as well. Uh, right now we have beautiful sunshine, so let's hope that the sun stays with us uh, for the rest of this tour. As you can see, the birch trees are just about to bring their leaves out and the views from top here are quite beautiful. But let's get started. We're gonna go down and show you some other stuff. Mm, it is pretty steep, these stairs here. So I will need to focus, I will show you where we're going, so you can imagine that you are here with me. Ooh. If you're afraid of heights, then this might not be your place. But otherwise, it's a good place to get a nice view of the whole area. I 
the more uh, past travel mates joining. I'm pleased to see you all online. Hopefully one day we will get to travel together for real again. But in the meanwhile, we can enjoy these virtual tours. And uh, most of you probably know that Finland is known as the land of thousands of lakes. There are more than 200,000 lakes in Finland to be more precise. But a uh, more surprising piece of information might be the fact that in Finland one third of the country is bogs or swamps. And this national park, Torronsua National Park, uh, hosts the deepest bog in all of Finland. Uh, we're gonna make our way soon there. We're gonna walk past the spring forest first and then we're gonna make our way to the uh, to the actual book and we can walk on the duck boards which will make sure that we won't get totally wet and yes one third so about 33 percent of all of finland is bogs and Finland is also the most forested country in Europe. For, uh, 75 percent of Finland is covered in forest. So quite a lot. There's a lot to discover. Especially now in springtime, it's really beautiful. Uh, you see new flowers and plants coming up and uh, and uh, every time you go out, you will see something new and something different, which keeps it exciting. This would be a great time uh, to go camping as well, if you have a proper sleeping bag and a proper tent, because the weather keeps changing quite frequently. In the day, you can have sunshine and pouring rain and also the temperature now is actually super nice and warm probably around 12 degrees celsius but in the in the night time it goes down to closer to zero still uh, while we are in may already i'm gonna show you the little back paths now so we're first walking on this uh, drier part of the forest here but soon you will see that it gets way more wet and therefore it's always good to be prepared with your uh, kumi saapat or wellingtons or rubber boots uh, even though on the book there you have the duck boards and you can walk on those um, if there are other people coming across you you have to uh, step to the side and also the duck boards are not in that good condition at the moment they are being renovated and replaced with new ones so therefore um, it's good to be prepared that you might get your feet wet let me show you a couple of the first spring flowers that we have here this is Sinivuakko and uh, this at least used to be protected, so you should not be collecting those. Also, I see something else that does not belong here. I'm really sad to see trash in, in the forest. Well, this one is an apple, so it will compost eventually. But still, it's a bad idea to throw food and things in the forest because they look nasty and it takes quite a while for them to uh, become part of the land as well. And if one person throws their apple there, all of a sudden there might be tens of them and then the nature animals might start eating them and that will mess up their system. Uh, but 
let's stay on the positive side. <laughs> Here we have another flower. In Finnish this one is called Valkovuakko. Also a typical springtime flower. And uh, those you can collect, but you should wash your hands afterwards. Uh, they are most well known as Mother's Day flowers. So often kids, they collect those and bring them among with the breakfast for their mothers uh, to bed on Mother's Day, which is the second Sunday of uh, May. So it was just a while back. Right. We are approaching the actual bog area now. It is around there and that's where we're gonna go. But first I'm gonna show you quite a funky looking birch tree. It's uh, not the most typical birch tree because it has two different sections growing. Up, 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 up it goes. And then again another two splitting up. And if you take a look and the other side also splits in two. So it's like a peace sign, which is a good reminder to all of us. When you visit the forest, stay calm, stay peaceful, breathe in, breathe out, enjoy the nature and the fresh air, and do not make too many noises. Especially in places like this, where there are a lot of birds. Can I zoom in? There was one right there. It's really small, so you probably can't see it. Oh, cutie! My hands are shaking too much. <laughs> that one is a tehtehyp, I believe. In Finnish, I have no clue what it is in English. <laughs> so many birds. But and on this national park, Torransua, uh, there are regulations that you should not go to certain parts of it uh, during the nesting season of the birds, because this is this uh, bog is frequented by a lot of different birds. For example, uh, swans. By the way, whooper swans are the national bird of Finland, and they are quite frequently here in springtime. Today I haven't seen them, and um, it might be because the weather is not so nice. Uh, but they are frequent here, and cranes as well. And a uh, lot of bird watching possibilities here, so if you visit, you might want to bring your binoculars, because uh, otherwise it might be a little bit tricky to spot the birds. Uh, cranes, Swans, very typical here normally, maybe a little bit earlier uh, in the springtime because as you might know, a lot of birds in Finland are migrating birds. So they fly away from Finland uh, for winter time when it gets too cold for them here. And then they, they come back usually in April, May, and then they stay here for the beautiful Finnish summer with long summer days, and then again they migrate away. Usually in the springtime, if you are a fan of, uh, of birds, or if you maybe like photographing birds, this is a good time to come, because uh, a lot of birds go through their mating rituals, rituals also uh, during springtime. And uh, at those times, their sounds are more pronounced, so you can hear, hear a lot of birds. Uh, also, for example, last night uh, I could already notice that the white nights are coming. And white night means that the sun is not really setting. And around 11 p.m. Yesterday it was still light, you could go out and you did not need any, uh, any torch or anything, so you can see nicely. And uh, even at that time the birds were singing beautifully, which is part of the summertime charm 
in Finland and springtime charm in Finland. Now that we are here already in the book, you can see here are these freshly made new uh, duck boards. The old ones are here. <laughs> they will be collected away at some point. So I can show you. Uh, I know I had one qu request asking about berries and mushrooms. So I can show you some berries that have survived from last summer. And those are cranberries. Cranberries are full of vitamins. They are quite bitter and tart, um, but really yummy. Especially if they have uh, been bitten by the frost for a bit. So they then become a little bit more uh, sweet. And you can eat them with a bit of uh, hot caramel. It's an excellent combination. So a lot of sweetness and a lot of tartness. But let me jump to the side here. I see other people are coming. So I can also show you some cranberries that have survived from last summer. So these leaves here, the long ones, uh, these are cranberry leaves. And there we have one little cranberry that survived the winter. It doesn't look like it's edible <laughs> anymore, but technically it's there. Usually they are a little bit bigger. So this one, as you can see, is tiny. Uh, blueberries or bilberries, the wild blueberries, they they are normally around this size. And they are probably the most typical um, berry in our forest. Cranberries. Cranberries only grow in bogs and really wetlands, uh, while blueberries grow in the drier areas. Another uh, berry that you can find from the bogs, but you can't find them, the new ones you can't find yet, uh, are cloudberries. And cloudberries are the queens of the berries, and they are extremely delicious. Mm, super nice and sweet and uh, they look like raspberries but they are more plush or plump um, and they are orange I have a picture here I can show you so this one next to the bird those are cloudberries but they normally come out uh, in August or September and uh, it is quite tricky to gather them because it's really, um, uh, what's the word? It's really wet and you can sink in, in the bog here, in the swamp. So I can show you just to demonstrate. Let me show you. Beautiful sound. <laughs> um, and actually here we can also see that some sort of a little deer has passed by. Here you can also see that the colors of the bog are not that vivid and they will actually never be. Maybe a little bit more green will come out at some point, but plenty of forest green colors, a bit of redness in the moss there and different shades of gray and brown. And this is really typical typical for a Finnish bog. Hmm, then you might also be interested in what kind of animals you can see here in southern Finland. Um, and I have to disappoint you a little bit because it's not so easy to see wildlife in Finland if you don't sleep in a tent and get up early in the morning. This is, by the way, where we were just a moment ago, Giljama. And, well, the viewing, viewing tower is just out there. But let's get back to the animals. So to spot some wild animals, you might need to go camping. 
and you do need to stay quite quiet but if you're lucky in summertime you can find these buddies also here in this region uh, brown bears have been sighted and uh, they can be dangerous if they have cubs around and there are different sorts of uh, advice how you should behave if you see a bear well obviously you should not approach it you should not make it angry and you should not go in between the cub and the mama bear and uh, some say that you should just go lying down on the ground and cover your ears and maybe your stomach and uh, just wait and pretend that you are dead but if if you see the bear in the distance somewhere out there then it's better that you just start taking steps backward a little bit and uh, be quiet and try not to take eye contact with the bear at least that's what I've been told I have never seen a brown bear uh, alive in the wild and I have been camping quite a lot I've been in the scouts since I was seven so every year quite a few times spent in the forest I had, I've never seen them I have heard bears uh, occasionally at least I think so but then I have just retreated and gone back uh, and hoping they did not uh, notice me uh, other animals that you could see here is deer different kind of deer uh, forest deer but no reindeer uh, reindeer those ones that are Santa Claus, Santa Claus's friends. Those buddies only live in northern parts of Finland and Sweden and Norway and Russia. So them you cannot find from here, but you can find bigger animals like moose. Big big moose do live in this these parts of Finland as well and uh, smaller animals like uh, bunnies and foxes and occasionally even uh, wolves and then one super beautiful animal that I wish I will see live in the nature one day is lynx lynx is a feline so represent uh, looks similar to a cat but is bigger and has fluffier paws and uh, funny little ears but I've never seen them in the wild yet but just uh, the day before yesterday we did see some of their marks or how do you call them their footsteps paw steps uh, right pretty close to our summer house and then there was also some some footsteps of a deer I think there's another word for footsteps of an animal but I can't remember it at the moment maybe I will at some point um, but yeah so it looked like there had been a hunting situation going on I will show you a bit of the swamp here while I try and look for a picture of, of a lynx actually oops. here we go this is a forest deer and these buddies you can see here around as well and then this one with the different um, mark as well footprints yes this is reindeer so you can see the color is quite different and their antlers are quite different as well and these ones here are moose male moose female moose and a baby moose and different kind of deer and then 
well these buddies as well uh, not the seals but all of the other ones you can see here except for Wolverine, Wolverine you can see only in the northern parts of Finland but here we have Ursus Arctos so the bear and uh, these bears can go up to 250 kilos so they are pretty huge imagine seeing one somewhere out there and uh, then I already forgot what's the name of this one well in Finnish it's Naura <laughs> These you can see here as well. And this is the one I wish to see one day. Lynx Lynx Ilves. So as you can see, it has these pointy um, ears and small little tail. Now, these are the typical animals and of course smaller ones and like fox for example and a wolf as well. But as said, you would be lucky if you do spot these in the wild. Let's move on. Let's see, by the way, if you have any questions there, do let me know. Last time I didn't see all of the questions during the live broadcast, but I will, if, uh, if I won't answer during this live broadcast, I will answer your questions later on and text back to you. But here we can see, I talked about lingonberries. So lingonberries are the other berries that you can find a lot in Finland. They are also small ones, similar size to bilberries. But the difference in these is that these leaves, they stay green throughout the year, even in winter time. Because normally most of green plants they drop their leaves uh, during winter and then they grow new ones back in summertime for example bilberries do that but these ones are kind of harder uh, leaves and they they remain green and then you have red berries that are again super healthy and super full of vitamins one of the reasons why berries from the northern parts of Europe are so much more full of nutrients and vitamins is the fact that our uh, summer, even though it is super short, our summer basically lasts for uh, maybe three months, June, July and August. Uh, but since the sun doesn't really set properly, the plants and berries get a lot of sunlight for a long, long time. So they soak in all the solar power, so to say, and then they can become super tasty. So that's definitely one thing to do is to eat a lot of fresh berries. But remember, if you come in winter time, you won't find fresh Finnish berries, or at least wild Finnish berries from the supermarkets. The ones in the plastic containers that look much bigger, like the size of my thumb, those are the cultivated blueberries that come from abroad. The ones that are more the size of my pinky finger top, those are actual Finnish live wild berries. Here we have a really typical Finnish tree. You see a lot of them here. These are pine trees. And you can see this orange part here. It doesn't have as much bark as the lower parts. But that's totally normal. That's totally natural. I have had people ask occasionally if some something has happened to these trees or if somebody has actually peeled off the bark from these trees on the top because they look so orange and so strange and so pale but that's not the case it's just the way <laughs> way they are naturally ah now i remember another question was about mushrooms 
in the season for fungi. Fungi. Um, and spring is not the time for mushrooms except for one type of mushroom and that is morel. I will show you a picture in two seconds. And morels are extremely tasty, uh, aromatic and delicious. But their growing season is super short. They only grow in May and June. And that's it. Afterwards you won't see, see them anymore. Or if you do, then they will probably be eaten by uh, snails or other small creatures in the forest. And morel, the Finnish name is Korvasieni, which means ear mushroom. And it might be because it resembles a little bit an ear or rather brain. And uh, when you collect these, you need to be kind of careful because they are poisonous and uh, you should be wearing gloves when you collect morels and actually you probably wouldn't find them here on this bog area you would find them more uh, in drier forests and uh, in more sandy uh, gr where, the where, where the ground is more sandy and it's a little bit tricky as well because not only are they poisonous, but they also easily collect sand inside of them. So you need to properly prepare them to make sure that you get rid of the poison. Because after you do a couple of things, you can indeed eat them. Um, but you also need to make sure that you get rid of all the sand, because otherwise it's not so nice in your uh, teeth when you hear it crunching between your teeth. And now, whoops, Mother Nature <laughs> has decided uh, that that was enough of sunshine. Uh, first raindrops are coming and the wind is getting stronger. And uh, that's how it is. You better be prepared for all sorts of weathers in Finland, especially if you go out in the nature. But let me tell you how to prepare your moral mushrooms. So you basically need to collect them with gloves and try to get rid of all the sand already when you are picking them up before you put them in your basket. And uh, then you need to boil them at least two times and each time for five minutes. And you need to change the water in between. And uh, then you need to also have uh, you should keep your uh, windows open so you get rid of all the fumes. And uh, then you can prepare them and make a really nice moral soup or like a stew. They are super tasty. But one of the reasons why they taste so amazing might be the fact that they are the first mushrooms of the season. And for the next mushroom, we need to wait for quite a bit still. Wonderful! We have big raindrops. And uh, <laughs> it looks more like hail already. It's getting really, really cold with the wind. And I can see from the clouds there that there's more pouring rain coming up. But that's okay. Rain or hail or shine. Prepare properly and you'll be just fine. <laughs> Alrighty. Guys, I think we have finished our half an hour lunchtime tour or European lunchtime tour. Uh, but since we still have a bit more way to go, I will continue talking here, telling you maybe a couple more stories about the Finnish nature <laughs> with the hail. <laughs> coming down let's see if i can catch any no they're bouncing they're bouncing out but yes indeed hail typical finnish winter uh, not winter spring <laughs>
Uh, I could tell you about the national symbols of Finland that can be found in the nature. I already mentioned whooping swan, which is the national bird of Finland. Beautiful big white bird. And then brown bear as the national animal of Finland. It's also the national animal of Russia, by the way, our eastern neighbor. And the uh, national tree is silver birch, B-I-R-C-H, birch. And uh, our national fish is perch, P-E-R-C-H, birch and perch. Uh, English words are at times challenging to pronounce, but perch is a kind of small fish, super tasty if you just fry it on the pan with a bit of butter or oil and add a bit of black pepper and, uh, and uh, salt, of course. Fantastic weather! Ah, I will show you. So these beautiful hail droplets are coming down. Spring is always surprising. It will melt away in a moment. But they're kind of beautiful. Adds to the charm. Also, this unpredictable weather means that there's not too many other people. Which is great, not only uh, in these special times, but also normally super nice. Uh, let's see, I will show you our national bird. Uh, not bird, a uh, tree. So here we have birch tree. Easy to recognize. White trunk with the black stripes. There are different style of birch trees though. And only sir silver birch is considered our national bird uh, tree. Um, the smaller ones in the mountains, or well, actually not mountains, but in the fells of northern Finland, uh, they are called mountain birch or dwarf birch. So there's plenty of them. Um, but back to the national symbols. Um, one of them, our national butterfly, is holly blue, which is kind of a small, small butter butterfly, which uh, is blue in color and kind of pretty small one. Our national stone or rock is granite. We have a lot of granite uh, in Finland. And some say that the reason why it has been chosen as our national rock is the fact that it is tough and hard and durable, just like we Finns. We don't mind about the weather or any other challenging conditions. We will push through and we will do it with a smile. <laughs> e? Yeah, that's my best advice for you guys for the rest of the week. Whatever comes, just keep smiling, have fun, find the positive uh, angles to every topic and uh, stay curious, stay tuned, stay happy and see you next time. Bye bye! Moi moi! Kitos!